Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Soumya Pillai. I'm a senior assistant editor covering environment and science with The Print. Uh, today at 4 p.m., the Central Pollution Control Board released the 4 p.m. bulletin of AQI and Delhi recorded an AQI of dangerously high levels, 494, which is one of the worst air spells that Delhi has seen in the recent years. Uh, as you all must have noticed that Delhi woke up to a very, very hazy morning today. And uh, it's not even winter where we can categorize this as dense fog. It's a toxic mix of pollutants coming from stubble fires, Delhi's own pollution. Uh, so, and essentially the weather factors have also not been favorable. So uh, this is uh, the time when we have gotten two of the experts to speak to us today. Uh, we have Dr. Sumit Ray. He's the medical director at Holy Family Hospital in Delhi, and he is one of the most renowned voices in critical care in the country. We also have uh, Sunil Dahia. He's the founder and lead analyst with the think tank Enviro Catalyst. He has over a decade's experience as a strategist and research analyst on various environmental issues. I'd like to welcome you to the discussions, uh, Dr. Ray and uh, uh, Mr. Daya. Uh, Mr. Daya, I would like to uh, start the discussion with you to understand what exactly is this high level of pollution. Like, you know, where is it coming from? Because we have been seeing that Delhi. Uh, see such dangerously high levels of pollutions every year. But, you know, this has been particularly bad where we are touching 494, which is extremely harmful to the health of the residents. If you could tell our viewers a little bit about what this is and what is exactly happening. Thank you, Soumya, for having me uh, here for this discussion. Uh, I would like to start with the fact that it's not just 495. Uh, if you look at the AQI numbers, uh, uh, these are going higher and higher. Uh, right now, if you look at last few hours, uh, PM 2.5 concentration, which is always lower than the AQI number, that has touched uh, or that has uh, consistently stayed above 500, 550, and even touched 800 during the afternoon today, which means that. Uh, Today's air pollution levels will be higher than yesterday if we take the entire day. This is a severe air pollution uh, situation. This has never happened in the last 10 years since the time we have started recording the real-time uh, data. So this is the worst ever pollution episode we are seeing. And I think uh, Dr. Ray will add in terms of uh, how does it translate into different kind of health impacts. Now, going behind why is this happening, this is... Uh, uh, obviously, uh, the kind of levels we have seen are, we are seeing that for the first time, but this is nothing new. We have been seeing this year after year. And the primary reason behind why do we have such emergency air pollution levels every year is that because we fail to address the sources of pollution or pollution at source throughout the year. And when the meteorology turns slightly uh, favorable for stagnation, inversion layer comes in, pollution level stays near the atmosphere. And these episodic events of stubble burning, firecracker bursting adds on top of already high emission load from other sectors such as transport, power generation, industrial pollution, waste and construction sector. Uh, we see uh, the hazardous situation uh, rising. Now, uh, if uh, we would have already dealt uh, in a systematic way with the existing base load, if you would have already reduced it, uh, we will still see uh, slightly higher pollution levels during the winter times, but those will never be as high as we see it uh, today. So it's 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 a, a failure to address air pollution at the source in a systematic and region uh, regional air side based approach, and uh, because of that we end up uh, being in emergency situation and start taking uh, uh, knee jerk reactions, uh, responsive actions, emergency actions, which uh, are. One, not even implemented on ground that well. And second, doesn't lead into systematic air pollution reduction uh, uh, in a more comprehensive way. Uh, I'd like to bring uh, Dr. Ray in this discussion now. Uh, sir, I'm just going to read out some data for today because uh, like Mr. Dahiya was pointing out that, you know, in a lot of areas in you know, even though Delhi's average AQI was 495, a lot of areas had a maxed out 500 count 
uh, if you look at PM 2.5 levels, according to uh, the Delhi Pollution Control Committee's data, uh, the uh, the PM 2.5 has peaked to uh, above 1,000 micrograms per cubic meter in many neighborhoods. So what is the kind of health impacts that, you know, such high levels of pollution can have? Because we are talking about severe today, but even for the last two weeks, Delhi's pollution level has been in very poor levels. So if you could just tell us a little bit about how dangerous can this be for residents in Delhi and CR? So, well... Uh... You know, this is something we do every year. And uh, unfortunately, this time is probably even worse than what I've ever lived through in Delhi, and I'm old enough to know. Uh, uh, so the immediate effects, some of it you must be feeling yourself. Uh, blocked nose, headaches. Uh, actually, it causes, also has been uh, noted to cause anxiety. And these are the you know less important factors. Uh, stress levels actually increase, and uh, they don't know the exact mechanism of it, but this, it seems to happen. Uh, the real physical danger, it gets worse and worse. The obvious ones are the respiratory, you know, cough, breathlessness, ex acute exacerbation of uh, uh, patients with asthma and COPD. These are the obvious ones which happen every year. Uh, this is the acute one. What, what is also acutely increases is the incidence of heart attacks, strokes, because what these PM 2.5 has been shown that they enter the bloodstream through the pulmonary and trigger the inflammatory response by multiple mechanisms in the body. And this low-grade inflammatory response, as we call it, uh, uh, it starts to damage the blood vessels, the small blood vessels, the microcirculation of the body, leading to you know clot formation, uh, a procoagulant stage, uh, which basically, basically it means that there are clots being uh, embedded in our blood vessels, blocking the blood flow to the brain, to the heart, to multiple vessels, uh, leading to this inflammatory response, leading to more heart attacks, more strokes, more arrhythmias. That means the heart going out of rhythm, increasing the number of deaths. That's the evidence uh, which clearly has suggested. What is obvious is the number of in, uh, admission increases in hospital and OPD visits for respiratory diseases. Uh, the cardiac diseases and the strokes, it takes a little more epidemiological data to prove it. You know. The respiratory data is very obvious. You see it and you see in the emergency people gasping for breath, right? Uh, or, or coughing away. But, uh, but the epidemiological data, now more and more data saying that, you know, the cardiovascular effects are terrible. Slightly long term, if you see, I don't even know if, I mean, it's not even very long term. Children who are growing up at this time of when they are small and their lung capacities are extremely badly affected, you know. And, and, and they grow up with lung diseases, not just that, their lung capacity in general is affected significantly. Then there is evidence to suggest that it's a long, uh, uh, you know, a te long and slightly tenuous connect, but probably because of the persistent inflammatory response, and this is not short term, uh, increased incidence of diabetes, and India is already the diabetes capital of the world, and there is an increased incidence of diabetes. All these add together. Uh, 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 Mr. Daya, we did speak about the the problem of pollution that Delhi has been facing year on, and this particular uh, spell that we are facing could be particularly bad. But uh, for our viewers, if you could explain, uh, you know, what uh, what are the primary sources of pollution that Delhi faces? Because we we are very quick to sort of point fingers that you know it's stubble, it's vehicles. But if you could just uh, give like a brief uh, introduction to our viewers of what exactly does uh, Delhi's pollution profile comprise of? See, uh, uh, this is absolutely right that uh, depending on what time of the year are we talking about uh, air pollution, uh, uh, the sources and the discussions changes. But it is uh, more prominently that stubble burning is discussed every year, year after year as the source of pollution because sadly we only talk about pollution when this invisible killer becomes visible and uh, opaques all other visibility. Uh, and that is the reason uh, if you uh, talk to anybody, uh, you will see everybody kind of blaming farmers for Delhi's air pollution crisis. But the farming happens only three weeks, four weeks at max. But uh, Delhi's air pollution level stays high all throughout the year except monsoon. 
and even during the monsoons we never reach uh, the safer le le level guidelines which are uh, kind of uh, communicated by world health organization we only manage to be nearly where the indian national ambient air quality standard is which itself is very relaxed so now uh, if stubble burning uh, and i'm not saying that stubble burning shouldn't be reduced it should definitely be reduced it's a major source around those four weeks but beyond that there are sources which are persistent perennial all throughout the year and that's where we are seeing very little uh, impact those sources include coal based power generation we see uh, a cluster of at least 12 to 13 power plants in the 300 kilometer radius of delhi and ncr only a couple of them have installed uh, uh, recent uh, uh, pollution control technologies uh, 10 to 11 still operates without them there are lots of industrial activities which have come up uh, in, in the delhi and Sia districts and the larger 300 kilometer uh, radius in last 10 years some of those uh, are based on clean fuel but if the emission load itself if the number of industries and the production cap keeps increasing uh, unregulated the overall emission load will keep increasing we uh, transport sector is another uh, major contributor to delhi's air pollution uh, levels contributing to about uh, 20 to 25 percent uh, all throughout the year uh, and that 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 for that uh, if you look at bharat 6 introduction in 2020 uh, that has definitely brought down pollution level or emission load from the transportation sector. But what has happened after that? Uh, the number of vehicle registrations is increasing. The petroleum product consumption is increasing. And with that increase, uh, that increase uh, is more than enough to compensate or overtake the reductions which we had gained through introduction of a new technology. So transport sector remains a bigger contributor. Not just Delhi, Del Delhi NCR and most of the uh, upcoming towns and cities uh, all throughout India have huge amount of construction going on. And though uh, there are portals where you register your construction activity, monitor the air quality, but there is no transparency about it. There is no uh, implementation of those uh, by bylaws or guidelines which are uh, released for the construction sector. And in absence of that, you know, that transparency of the data in terms of where these buildings are, where this construction is happening, how much uh, is emitted or what is the pollution level there uh, that data is not available in public domain and that opaques the accountability uh, so construction sector is another major portrait waste generation uh, we live in delhi and at least certain pockets in delhi manage their waste decently well uh, they segregate and uh, and uh, compost at the site and all those things particularly in the dda RWA colonies, but most of the uh, uh, parts of Delhi as well as Delhi and CR don't even segregate the waste. Even if they segregate the waste, there is no awareness in terms of reducing the waste generation itself because the quantum of waste which we are generating every day that is increasing. And with that increase in quantum, if you are not segregating, if you are not reducing it, that has to be transported to these big landfill sites using polluting trucks uh, and vehicles, and that adds to air pollution. And once it lands at that landfill site, it's either it either burns on itself because of high methane and heat there, or it is burnt in waste to energy plants. So all these uh, the the reason behind Delhi's air pollution is not just double burning, it's not just firecrackers. Yes, these contribute as an episodic event, but there is uh, much more going on throughout the year. And there uh, we see very little action uh, taken, or at least uh, I can say that we haven't responded to reducing pollution at source across those sectors with the same intense intensity uh, 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 as the the intensity of the emergency or, or, or this public health emergency we face. Uh, and uh, I would like to also add that it is very convenient for the administration uh, as well as these uh, big powerful polluting sources to divert the attention uh, to uh, measures like stubble burning or to uh, saying that yes. uh, it's people who are running cars who are behind the pollution because you will keep fighting the rural population and the urban population will keep fighting that it's you, no, it's you uh, who's causing pollution. But uh, behind all that, uh, what is happening over the last 10 to 15 years is the big polluters and the administration station failure in terms of providing better infrastructure for transportation waste management and construction sector that is going unnoticed and uh, it is only that reason that we have not been able to curb that that's why uh, we end up uh, whenever the meteorology turn, turns unfavorable whenever uh, uh, there are the, there are these episodic events we uh, uh, enter this uh, health emergency situations we are very lucky if we have rains or we have high winds uh, because that is the only way we have been able to have clean air or last last decade or so 
doctor hey, taking from what uh, mr dahia just pointed out that you know the sources of pollution are more uh, emission based where you know the particles are getting tinier uh, and you know there there's a mix of gases uh could you uh, explain a little bit about uh, because we did start off this whole discussion with you know uh, pm 10 levels which are more coarser and then mm -hmm. went off to pm 2.5 now we are discussing pm 1 which are One. like even tinier in terms of mm -hmm. size mm -hmm. absolutely what um, uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, you know uh, the kind of How damage that each pollutant level could do to human body so the pm10 the obviously the large particles are the obvious culprits for the most of the respiratory diseases the uh, you know the irritation that we feel in the eyes uh, and the nose etc the sore throats and that but the pm2.5 and the smaller particles as i said go into the blood stream trigger through the lungs trigger as a inflammatory responses and also interesting it's it's very it's in a very complex pathway of inflammation where our energy sources within our cell the mitochondria itself get damaged okay so our our energy sources of our cells are getting damaged they when once they get damaged they have this reaction where they release what are called you know uh, reactive oxygen species in the blood which are the dangerous oxygen species in the blood and that is what and there are multiple mechanisms which cause these lesions in the blood vessels the primary target is the blood vessels at multiple levels and the small and the not so small blood vessels and this and these supply all our organs right so every organ which is supplied by blood vessels to maintain it will be affected eventually right the evidence is building up you know we didn't even know of the cardiovascular effect, effect still about a couple of decades back uh, i mean slowly the evidence is being generated as we know more and more and so so now we now we realize that this this effect on the blood vessels on the microcirculation etc is affecting not just the heart not just for the strokes but also our peripheral vascular disease i mean the uh, blood vessel supplying our tissue other tissues and obviously if this is the pathway that it is taking then it is going to cause kidney dysfunction also in the setting of uh, diabetes etc so if the pathway is getting more and more clear that means it is going to cause multiple organ dysfunction at some point or another because the pathways some of the pathways are very common to organ damage so that's what is happening so it's really scary i mean the more i read the more i i mean feel what i mean i'm 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 fairly old and i don't have many years to live but I, for the young people coming up it's it's a terrible terrible situation and you know when when we used to read charles dickens in school you know and they used to describe london of the 1850s 1860s and i used to think that you know, this is not going to happen to us it's we are a century and a half uh, ahead and i mean this is exactly the description that dickens makes of london of that time and in 150 years we do not have the wherewithal or the evidence uh, i mean the the, the ability uh, in our country to have the necessary you know it's i don't it has gone beyond individual intervention i think i mean uh, mr dhaya has spoken so well uh, about this that individual intervention yes awareness is important but it is way beyond individual intervention and he as he rightly said that you know blaming the farmer blaming the car driver or the vehicle driver that is not going to change it anymore it requires significant legislation and everyone is culpable in that all governments are culpable in that 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 significant legislations required and steps required to change these things are not being taken and our we suffer our children are going to suffer more and the younger generation is going to suffer more and 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 it is very obvious i mean look at i mean you're talking about you know uh, getting the olympics in this country right our children's lung capacity is reducing what is the olympics they're going to play in? i mean seriously i'm not joking and our urban population is increasing our rural population is re reducing as as industries increase as urbanization increases so more of the population will come into cities and have unhealthy lives uh, and, and i mean forget forget anything else i mean you are you know one one is claiming to get the olympics here do sports and become a sporting nation and a healthy nation uh, where do i mean i i seek i mean the other craziness is that people running marathons in this time i mean i just start can't understand it i mean that's the other side of the story that uh, we don't even get the uh, have the judgment that this is not the time to hold marathons or half marathons etc and people celebrating these marathons in this pea soup of a uh, you know of an environment uh, not i mean uh, so so oh, 
these elements have to be and uh, mr thayya put it so so succinctly about what are the elements which need to be looked at need to be restricted uh, you know uh, so uh, Dr. Rajak, the follow-up question, uh, is there, uh, I don't know how much of it is going to help because the pollution levels are uh, so high, so dangerously right. high. Is there any advice that people can follow at this time, especially the more vulnerable population uh, when the pollution levels, you know, going forward? Because there is no respite, uh, Mr. Daya, if I'm not wrong, at least for the next two, three days. Uh, anything that citizens can do to stay protected at this time, health-wise? So whatever advice I'll give, it will be for the well-off. It cannot be for the poor, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, right? So that, that's why this advice becomes, you know, very uh, selfish in a sense that it is only for the people like us who can close their doors, close their windows, keep the pollution out, put purifiers in their room, uh, air, uh, air purifiers, how much that works is questionable. Put N95 masks. Okay, how, how many poor in this country can... Uh, you know where. So when we when we give advice, and I, I, I'm always bothered by giving this advice that what can I do to you know be safe? If somebody asks me, yes, maybe you will become safe. And the whole point is that this attempt by the elite and people like us to be safe from pollution is is also what is not pressurizing governments more and more to do more for all the people. It is unfortunately the way we look at things in this country that. If I am well off, if I can do save myself and my children as much as I can, as much as you cannot actually, you cannot, you can only restricted amounts, you can save yourself and your children from this pollution, the effects of this pollution on your health. But if I can do that, let the rest of the, you know, let there be a deluge for the rest. I mean, that is the mindset which has also got to change to pressurize governments to take these legislative actions. If we do not really agitate to do this and we take measures to protect only ourselves, it is not going to change. We may reduce our, eff our the effect on us by about 10%, 20%, God alone knows. But, but overall, the total harm to our society, to our people is immense. And if we don't, if we don't fight that, if we don't push back against that, constantly ask questions of the government, it is not going to change. So that's why I find it very difficult to get, give advice on these things that how do I protect myself? I'm sorry. Uh, like it's you know uh, i i never wear n95 masks i you know or, or because it's it's just saving yourself i don't you uh, use air purifiers etc because i because it's it's so so self you know selfish in a sense that you do that for yourself while the while the world can die from the pollution that is around a uh, very, very pertinent point, Dr. Ray. Uh, I'm going to move to the closing remarks, uh, uh, Ms. Daya and Dr. Ray. Uh, just by your comments about, you know, we had the graded response action plan stage four, which was activated at 8 a.m. today. Much of the activities have been restricted. But do you think these are effective measures to curb pollution levels? Or, or do you think that these are just responsive reactions to the high level of pollutions. So, uh, we'll start with, uh, the, Mr. Daya, and then we can move to uh, Dr. Ray. Thank you. Uh, I completely agree with every single word Dr. Ray has said. That it's it's very light uh, to say that we can use masks, we can use uh, purifiers, and uh, I think if you look at the air pollution journey before 2019, there was a momentum building up. People were rising. There were questions asked. Uh, sadly. COVID derailed that and after that we have never been able to come back to even that level where we were. And it's the apathy of uh, general citizens, at least the ones who are aware, the ones who can ask questions, uh, of not asking questions, which has led us where we are. So thank you, Dr. Ray, for putting that so well. Uh, uh, so now coming back to uh, the... Uh, uh, so what I feel... Uh, uh, so what, what I feel is uh, if we look at graded response action plan, uh, most of the actions which were advised under stage one, stage two and stage three, most of them were not implemented on ground. And that is why the pollution levels kept rising. That is why we reached a stage where we have to announce gra uh, graded response section one, stage four. Now, under stage four, if you look at it, it broadly just do two things. One, ask the construction sector to restrict activities. And second, ask the transport sector to restrict activities. Now, if those 
guidelines uh, or those uh, 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 those actions are implemented on, on ground they will reduce the emission load a little bit uh, maybe maybe one percent two percent but it is all those actions which were under stage one stage two stage three and stage four cumulatively if they are implemented then we might be able to reduce pollution levels uh, significantly now uh, it is also very ironic to see uh, actions under different stages of grab uh, let's take an example of stage two we say all the illegal industrial units which are emitting high pollution should be closed down if it is already known that there are illegal industrial units operating in this country which are emitting high why did you even allow them at the first place so there are so many action plans which uh, look decent and we get really uh, 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 um, we, we, we are very impressed by the governments uh, and the administration at certain times looking at they are doing something they are announcing different step, uh, steps step but a lot of those steps should have already been taken by the government by the administration and they didn't take it that's why we have to come on uh, these steps have to be announced and most of these steps are not implemented on the ground now one uh, uh, of the immediate things which the government can do and they have the uh, system uh, to do that is that they know where all the polluting industries are they know where all the polluting coal based power plants are uh, they they control the uh, transportation system so what they should do is and they also know how much these industries are emitting all the industries are uh, uh, linked to cpcb and spcb's continuous emission monitoring platforms so they should immediately restrict the operation of these polluting industries at least for next week or so so that the pollution levels come down uh, significantly uh, what we also see uh, that when we when different stages of grab grab are announced we don't see those actions being taken on ground when we go out in delhi we see the transportation being the same way we see the same number of cars i think there should be uh, regulations uh, or, or these directions implemented of staggered office timings uh, 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 holiday for schools and colleges and better public transportation facilities all those things which are put in grab and not put in grab uh, uh, which the activities which reduces the emission load at source all those can be controlled by the government within a day uh, because they have all the systems in place they know where what is happening at what rate at which, which place so all that should be done uh, just announcing grab stages is not going to solve problem and we have failed in implementing those on ground till now at least and that is why the pollution levels have kept rising over the last few days uh, Dr. Hay, if you would want to add something on those lines, what exactly uh, are we lagging? Where exactly are we lagging? And what can the government and the citizens do to make this any better? Well, I'm not an expert on that. <laughs> I look at the health end of uh, what it causes. But I mean, uh, I would agree with uh, Mr. what Mr. Dhaya said. And uh, I, I mean, what as, again, unfortunately, but as, as individuals we can do is not do something stupid like run a marathon. Uh, go out cycling. The poor have to do it. Those who can afford not to do certain things, you know, uh, heavy physical activity outside, keep your doors closed, etc. And uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, so those are the things. And I think, I mean, the, 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 it is a time that uh, you know, uh, it's a, a very funny story. So this doctor was asked by a television to that can you can you give an interview for pollution this year so he said why don't you rerun my last year's one okay uh, so, so so the advice remains very very similar to uh, what it has been uh, but it has uh, i mean we have what we discussed is that i think it is trying time as citizens probably to ask as before 2019 as mr bahia said that we have to ask more questions. I don't think it is going to happen by protecting ourselves individually. It has to be a popular citizens movement to now really ask questions of governments. What is the, what are they doing? And it is the easiest, as Mr. Bahia said, to blame the farmers for burning uh, stubble. I think it's, it's an escape which is the easiest to do. Uh, uh, and, and 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 I think it's the worst thing that we are doing uh, by by pointing our fingers there and not doing so many of the things that was emphasized by Mr. Bahia. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Daya, and thank you, Dr. Ray, for joining us today for this very, very important discussion. Uh, the season seems to have started on a very grim note. Uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for our, to our viewers for uh, tuning into this uh, discussion. Uh, the air quality, uh, the forecast for the air quality is to get worse, if not better, in the coming days. So the advice that we have from our experts is to stay safe and stay protected and also keep the conversation around the deteriorating air quality, which is which has become a seasonal phenomenon in Delhi to keep going. Uh, please do stay with the print for our continuous coverage around Delhi NCR and the neighboring states uh, environmental issues. Uh, because we keep doing uh, everything that you need to know about air quality and the action that is being taken by the government. Uh, thank you for staying with us and thank you to the experts for speaking to our viewers today. Uh, my name is Soumya Pele and uh, thank you for tuning into the print. <laughs>